Welcome, listeners, to www.ironradio.org, the website and podcast for all things strength sports and sports nutrition. Thanks for listening. Good morning, everybody. This is Phil Stevens. You're on another episode of Iron Radio. I am a strength coach, power lifter, Highland Games athlete, and youth sports coach. I'm also giving another seminar, July 6th and 7th in Bozeman, Montana, at a place called Prime. So I heard up, yeah. about that. I will put oh. up a uh, flyer soon. So they're doing the flyer. And, but uh, yeah, you're a graphics guy. <laughs> you would appreciate what what was put together. That's a, it's this really cool old timey poster thing. Yeah, I'm looking yeah. at it now. I love it. It looks great. So, yep, we're going to talk yeah. about powerlifting on day one, and then day two will be. Three parts, uh, training young kids, training older populations, and training the injured. So, which I've, I've wow. been all those things. I was young once, I'm old now, and I've been injured. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Is it just the, the two-day chronicle of Phil seminar? Yeah. Pretty, pretty much. It says on there I'm going to wrestle a bear. So. Ooh. <laughs> I'm going now. I'm in. That's right. Fly now. Actually, I might be able, we might be able to make it, so I'll That's talk fun. to you about that. Yeah, um, yeah I was Dr. Mike Tenelson, associate professor, Kerrigan Institute, creator of the Flex Diet Cert and the Fizz Flex Cert, which is, Fizz Flex Cert is still open through Monday night, uh, March 25th, 2024, if you're interested, and at home for a few more days. Got to soak them up while you got them when you're at home. Yeah. It's, it's been yeah. nice to sleep in my own bed and train in the yeah. same place every day. That's cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and this is Lonnie Lowry. Uh, I'm also a PhD in ex-phys. Uh, I'm a nutritionist with a license to practice in that and et cetera, et cetera. So, oh, former competitive bodybuilder. And the point with that last one is I actually this past week, I just indulged because after my ankle surgery, I'm actually walking around now. Hooray. No boot. I even got rid of the brace. Oh, that's um, good. And my foot will still swell up. And for anybody who has to have an ankle surgery, by the way, I said, when is this edema? When is the swelling going to go away? And he oh. said, oh, well, we really took you apart. I mean, it could be a year before that's it completely takes a gone. While. And I'm like, oh, man. Um, it doesn't hurt. It works. I mean, I don't think I'd go on a hike on uneven ground right now with, without a brace. But But anyway, the point is, I had been going in trying to be a good boy. I I knew that I could do, you know, a stationary bike. I could do the row or I could do some cardio stuff. I just indulged. I didn't do aerobic stuff. I just went in. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do it like the old days. Instead of like cardio taking half the time and only doing a couple of sets for chest or arms or whatever it was, I just did like a chest and arms, like old school bodybuilding split. I actually did like eight sets of each thing. Like I know that doesn't sound like a lot to a lot of people, but the, like this is the first time I've been back and actually just lifting. And it felt so good just to <laughs> lift. Uh, no paying your dues on the rower and taking <laughs> cannabinoids to try to get through it. <laughs> like I've heard people do. <laughs> anyway, <recommended. laughs> yeah, it just felt good to be sore and just, I don't know, just lift. We like lifting, but not everybody does. So I want to share something that we got from Dave Fryers, uh, uh, one of our uh, longtime listeners, educated dude. Exercise mimetics, fitness in a pill. So there's a couple of different ones of these. They sound honestly like like they're SARMs or something. You know, they all have these crazy like letter and number names and because they're investigational drugs or some of the old obesity drugs. You guys remember like they were called who knows – the alphabet soup of letters and yeah. some numbers. And mm-hmm. Anyway, it says, obviously everybody knows physical activity. It builds muscle, keeps your bones strong, it helps with cognition, it does all these things, uh, keeps your blood pressure down, diabetes, you know, at bay. The problem is, and this is some researchers that are behind these meds, the pesky part about actually moving. That's literally what this says. Mm. Uh, fewer than half of American adults get recommended amounts of aerobic exercise. Fewer than a quarter fit in strength training, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. So less than 25% do any kind of resistance training. I'm sure it's bad. I mean, we talked about numbers in the past. Phil mentioned some stuff about like how many people, what was it, could bench their body weight or something. It's it's just Mm -hmm. abysmal, right? And Durrell brought up something that I didn't really address because we were out of time last time, which was our kids are so weak. 
it's a national security risk, mm-hmm. right? If there's oh, a draft, yeah. if there's a draft of a bunch Rolling. of 19 year olds, oh, yeah, it, it's going to take them half a year to get them so they can tote a gun and a heavy backpack and run around in the woods. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. hang on, everybody. We need a timeout here in the United States. We can't yeah. go to war yet. <laughs> We're too out of shape. I can see how it's a security risk. It says enter exercise mimetics. Unlike calorie restriction mimetics, and Dave sent a bunch of stuff about those too, and we've been hearing about those for a while, but exercise mimetics affect mitochondria, the tiny powerhouse plants and muscle. We know this. Um, they switch on genes that encourage the growth of more mitochondria and encourage them to burn fatty acids, not just glucose, for fuel. It says in mice, this can keep them from gaining weight. It increases their insulin sensitivity, uh, boosts exercise endurance. And then it says, here's a quote, we can use a drug to activate the same networks that are activated by physical activity, said Ron Evans, Ph.D., a professor and director of the Gene Expression Lab at the Salk Institute for Biological Sciences in La Jolla. It says, among notable memetics moving into human studies is ASP0367, a drug in a class called PPAR Delta Modulators, first developed in Evans Lab. This drug, this ASP0367, was licensed to the pharmaceutical company Mitobridge, later acquired by Astellas. Uh, Astellas is currently running a phase two and three human trial investigating this drug in people, but Again, this isn't a rare disorder. This is for some mitochondrial myopathy kind of thing. It says, meanwhile, at the University of Florida, Burris and team hope to soon move the exercise mimetic SLUPP332 into human studies. Here's a quote. It targets a receptor called ERR that I've been working on since the 1980s, Burris said. We knew from genetic studies that ERR has a role in exercise's effects on mitochondrial function in muscle. The calorie mimetics that he's studying also activate genes for making more mitochondria and driving them to burn fatty acids. This generates a lot of energy, he said. In a January 2024 study in Circulation, which is a premier journal, Burris found the drug restores heart function in mice experiencing heart failure. Now, I can see that, right? Your heart gets stretched out weak. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have that inotropic thing. And, Mike, you've done a lot of engineering stuff with uh, cardiac stuff. So I can see this helping people who – are sick you know massive sarcopenia heart failure now here's where it kind of starts applying more to us the future of exercise and in cr pills the field has hit some bumps some feel inevitable such as otherwise healthy people misusing these drugs gw1516 an early experimental exercise mimetic studied by evans and abandoned because it triggered tumor growth in lab studies It is nonetheless used illegally by elite athletes as a performance-enhancing drug, despite the warnings from USADA, right, U.S. Anti-Doping Agency. Burris worries that future calorie restriction memetics or some of these exercise memetics could be used the same way. And then there's actually a link here. What should tested athletes know about GW1516? Again, it's an USADA link. So obviously there's benefits to some of these things. I guess my thought is that there's also some – ethics behind some of this and i don't just mean cheating in sports i mean like justice like i'm gonna pop a pill and screw the gym i'll save my gym membership you know Uh, the problem is i think if you start building a bunch of mitochondria and creating a lot of cell energy i'm not surprised about the tumor growth with this one drug you know plenty of energy and indiscriminate tissue growth sounds bad (laughs) sounds like that could be bad but what do you guys think about about this stuff? Mike, have you heard of any of these before? Yeah, so the one you mentioned from the the GW one, I think, is by the trade name Carterin. If I if they're referring to the same one, that was GW five zero one five one six. So I think it's the same one. Okay. Uh, as a uh, PPAR gamma uh, target, and so for listeners, PPAR gamma is one of the main targets molecularly of aerobic adaptation. It's not the only one, but it's probably one of the main kind of linchpin areas. And it seemed to be pretty effective, but like you said, the side effect was cancer. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, it's, I would, I've would, i looked at it quite a bit because it was, for a while, it was in the quasi kind of gray legal, illegal area. Uh, like IOC, like a lot of other you know big organizations banned it, but smaller organizations for a while had not. It... 
I've talked to people who have used it and they said for cardiovascular benefits and aerobic training, it was actually quite good. Some people did report muscle pain, joint pain. Arguments for it would say that the dose they used in the mice for cancer was just too high and mice are not humans, etc. But I don't know. It just makes me really nervous. It's not anything I've ever recommended. There's not studies on super clear how much enhances performance either. But it's really hard to make any sort of reward risk calculation because they stopped it before they did a lot of human trials. So we don't really know what goes on in humans. But I don't know. It's one of those that just makes me the yeah, makes me nervous, but I also highly conservative with <laughs> with that yeah. stuff too. I think at yeah. some point maybe they'll figure some stuff out, but exercise is you know, you guys all know is so complicated and does so many things that I, mean, I think yep. mm-hmm. we may get some small little targets here and there but i if you would have asked me two years ago i would have said no not i don't even think it'll happen in my lifetime and then now with ai writing essays it would pass for grading <laughs> in classes and you know would go be in like you know drugs that just absolutely crush appetite i I don't know if I know anything anymore about prediction. <laughs> well, in fact, Mike, uh, let me set this up for Phil. This says Burris and others see plenty of benefits in the future for when they become FDA approved and in humans. Exercise memetics like SLU PP332 might one day be given to people alongside weight loss drugs such as Monjero or Ozempic, of course, yeah. right? To prevent muscle loss, right? Because those drugs make you not eat. It says SLUPP332 doesn't affect hunger or food intake the way that those drugs do. It changes muscle. That's the quote. It changes muscle. I mean, I think about Exercise Fizz 101 class. The first thing I come out of the gate with is this is not just anti-eating, right? This changes you on a fundamental level from the subcellular level all the way up. And biochemists love to talk a good game. Like we know this. They want grants. So they're going to be like, oh, yeah. so ergo, this pathway will lead to this. <laughs> the like, holy eh. grail pathway. Right. It's like, well, that's physio- that sounds logical, but is it physiological? We need to go look. In fact, what we're talking about here, listeners, is what we're going to talk about today is, you know, basically a lot of PEDs that are now being embraced by the gen pop. They used to be so viciously condemned, right, for strength mm-hmm. sports and that kind of stuff. But Phil, what do you think about this? Like, you know, now they want to stack it even with some of the uh, Ozempic type drugs and uh, exercise in a pill. I have a few problems. Um, number one, if it actually did work, like really well, I've got an issue with like you're skipping the skeletal loading part. Let's say this thing just did create a bunch of muscle. Like. That's fine, but it's like me taking a big race car engine and putting it into my little Ford out there. Like, mm-hmm. the car itself is not prepared for what it's going to do. So, <laughs> I see drastically bad things happening. Like, you're not going to prepare your tendons and everything else and your bone structure for this by sitting on your ass and just taking a pill. That automatically makes you better. Mm-hmm. So, while the muscle tissue itself might be stronger and bigger and, like, the, the structure that holds it isn't, so I could see problems there. Um, we see that with part- some PEDs too, like soft tissue injuries are are much higher yeah. because it's targeting more muscle than soft tissue, and GH targets more soft tissue than muscle, and that's why people will use both. And yeah. But my other issue was that it was just that it's like people always come, there's always this new stuff coming up, and it usually ends poorly nowadays. It seems like the testing before they launch shit has gone downhill greatly. And it's like when people come to me and like, well, what should I take? There's these new SARMs. There's these new. It's like, yeah, but we don't know what the fuck that does. No idea. Like, like the good thing about the old anabolics and things is we know, like, we know what they do and we know the bad things they do. Historically. They've been, we, yeah. Historically, like, you know what you're getting into with a lot of this new shit. It's like, OK, it might do this, but we don't know what it might do bad. Is that's what scares me? Is like I'm, like I don't know if it's going to make me grow a third arm that's cancer, you know, <laughs> and things like that. I mean, I just yeah. don't know. I, whereas I know, like, if I take some testosterone, it's not going to do that. You know, at least we have decades of use behind that. It's like at least you're informed of the bad. 
And if I'm going to do something, I want to be informed of both sides. You know? <laughs> so. And testosterone, you have established testing. We know what markers it affects. We can look yeah, for those markers you, through a qualified physician. Like, <laughs> we've got a pretty yes. good framework. Like, well, on these things, it's like, well, what are we looking for for things to exactly. go wrong? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We don't know where to look. So, and that's my issue. It's like, man, and everybody's so quick to jump on the new new thing. And it's like, man, you don't know what you're doing yourself. Like, like I remember when uh, IGF-1 became big. Oh, and yeah. I was talking to a pharmacy friend of mine. And this is yeah. a dude that, uh, he took a lot of things. <laughs> and he, he was like, I won't touch that with a 10-foot pole. He's like, that's the one thing I would tell anybody not to use. He said, because it's the on, it's the on switch of growth. He said, the problem is it's not. It doesn't care what it's turning on. Yeah, it's not driven by you know? demand, right? No, it's not just muscle. He said, if you're, he said, we all walking around with, with like cancer cells that are dormant. Yeah. He's like, it'll, it might tell them, hey, turn on. Yeah. You know? It's go time. Yeah. <laughs> right. And here's he's like, plenty you're, of you're, ATP. Right. Yeah, here's energy telling, to build whatever you want indiscriminately. He's like, yeah. He's like, you're telling everything to grow. And he's like, man, that just seems like a, a bad cocktail. So, hmm. and that's, that's my issue with it. It's like, man. And call me a big sissy, whatever. I just don't, I want to know what the hell, what the hell I'm getting into. <laughs> you, know? you know, it's funny to hear that because here's you, you know, big power lifter, and you're you're exercising caution, and it's the gen pop now who wants to embrace these things. And let's face it, oh. capitalism plays into this, right? Late stage oh, yeah. capitalism, everything's about money. Oh, here's yeah. a quote. Let's check this out. Evans sees only positives. Quote. Our environment is designed to keep people sitting down and consuming high-calorie foods, he said. In the absence of getting these people motivated to exercise, and there's no evidence that countries moving in that direction, a pill is an important option to have. What? Yeah, <laughs> that's because everybody's lazy as shit, and they want yeah. everything in three seconds. And that's yeah. the problem. That's been the beautiful thing about the beautiful thing about elite athletics in any field has been your willingness to do it, your willingness to put up with the suck. You know, that's what separates. Yeah. It separates people. And, like, anybody can do it. Like, anybody could be very muscular and very strong if they have the mental fortitude to, to get off your ass. You know? You know, my son, he quotes something that's all over the internet of course he says everybody wants to look like a bodybuilder but ain't nobody want to lift heavy damn weight <laughs> yes yes and that's yeah i've seen people that are just like they fell off the genetic bus and got ran over by it but they can get strong you know just through hard work and dedication and discipline and motivation i don't know it's sad to me that it's just like potentially at some point we could go all captain america and literally you take a shot or a pill and you're just there um, yeah. And I just I don't see it ending well. Like there's going to be some kind of backlash, bad side effect. <laughs> yeah. It's hard not to drift into the topic of the day. I want to say one thing before we go to break because we better do that before we get into this. But I, just to kind of reinforce something that we were touching on earlier, when there's no demand, like there's no need for mechanical movement, like you were saying, like mechano sensing is a thing. Muscles know when they're under tension. Yeah. It's a demand. It's a stimulus. It's a draw. Now you might say, well, this drug's a stimulus. Yeah, but there's there's nothing draining ATP on the exertion side. You know what I mean? There's nothing draining energy. You're just providing more mitochondria. They're burning fat for energy and now you have uh, an abundance of energy for like who knows w which direction that's going to go. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there's no demand. There's no initial depletion, right, that your body – because that's the whole idea of adaptation. It's like your body is insulted in some way, and it's like I don't know what you just did to me, but you're not going to do that again. I'm going to be a little bigger, a little stronger, more plasma volume, whatever it is, and so I can handle that. But there is no demand, Right. There's no draw that induces these changes. They're just changes <laughs> without demand, physical demand. And I don't think that's going to go well either. I mean, yeah. who knows? Who knows? Oh. Maybe they'll luck out. And I think the other thing that gets me is, like, if you look across the history of drugs that help with muscle and strength and everything else, generally the 
what we know is the better something works, like Trenbolone is 47 times more anabolic than testosterone. <laughs> they usually those things that work better have drastically higher <laughs> rates of uh, bad side effects. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. and that's been that way. Like, look at any, any drug like aspirin works. Guess what? Opiates work better. For like blocking pain, but the side effects are a hundred times fucking worse. You know, Careful. generally the better something works, <laughs> right? The, the more bad it does too. Um, there's so. just there's just no physiologic free lunch. No, it just, yeah, just, it just, it just isn't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. and it's I I just don't see it happening. Like where we just we get to sit on our ass and be jacked. I mean, I don't see. Yeah. I maybe it's me hoping that. You know, I hope that it doesn't turn out that way. I want to know that that if that dude or that girl is jacked and like she she he whoever they put in the work, right. you should have to put in the work. You got to earn it. Mm-hmm. Or it's not worth it. To me, that's justice, right? You know yeah. what? Let's go to break. I have a question for you guys when we come back, but we'll continue this conversation. Hey, everybody! Iron Radio is back and in an expanded way. What can you expect? Well, first. You can get it simulcast every week on the nutritionradio.org network as well as on the original podcast. It'll appear regularly on iTunes, Spotify, and all your favorite podcasting sites. We have a new Iron Radio slash Nutrition Radio Facebook page as well. Please check us out. We're even backed up on YouTube. We hope that an expanded presence will get you the news, education, banter, and guests that's made Iron Radio's community so loyal from the start. You are appreciated. All right, everybody. We're back, and we're talking about exercise in a pill, um, performance-enhancing drugs. Phil, let me ask you this. So what has changed in the gen pop? I mean, we grew up, you know, think like 80s, 90s, early 2000s, lots of shade thrown at bodybuilders and powerlifters mm-hmm. because PEDs were bad. You know, oh, my God, they're actually injecting stuff, yeah. um, popping pills. It was very bad, and these people were – even if you took the argument like, well, alcohol, tobacco, you know, the usual arguments, and you know, those are just done for recreation. These things are done with great purpose. Some of these people have mm-hmm. a calling like a priest, and they're using them. Anyway, now the general population, they've just done a complete 180 it seems yeah. like. Like this researcher even only sees positives. Well, sure, with multi-million dollar grants on the horizon. <laughs> I might negative. too. Oh, the exactly. guy, this shit may not work. Whoops. <laughs> so what's going on with the gen pop that now they are eager to pop pills and even make, take injections? Um, what's I can, changed? I can only guess a, a big part of it is popular culture in and of itself. Like if you look at the TV and radio when we were kids, like you never saw a pharmaceutical commercial. Oh. And now that's oh, all yeah. you see. True. Like everything you like anything in your life can be cured by a pharmaceutical. And like you don't need to eat right. You just need to take this. You know, and I think it's it's just our quick culture. Like <clears throat> I think that's a lot of it. Is like like, oh, everything that's wrong with us can be cured. Just go to the doctor. Like need to get stronger? Go to the doctor. Need to not be type two diabetic? Go to the doctor. Need to lose mm-hmm. weight? Go to the doctor. It's not on you. you know? <laughs> it's 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 a fault in your, you know, you're missing something. You know? Yeah. So it's not that you're a lazy shit and eat like a shit bag. It's <laughs> not taking the right pills. <laughs> yeah. Well, this this Evans literally said there's no evidence a country is moving toward getting motivated to exercise, so a pill is an important option to have. Yeah. It's- what? To me, that is so riddled with ethical problems. Yeah. You know, pills are an important option. Well, yeah. yeah, if you have cardiomegaly and, you know, you had high <laughs> blood pressure for 30 years and your heart's stretched out and weak and doesn't pump blood, I get it. Yes, sir. Do a clinical trial. Um, but they're talking about stacking it with Wigovi. Um, of course. Because then yeah. you've got the – you need the pharmaceutical to cover the side effects from the other pharmaceutical mm-hmm. you got. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's what our culture has turned into. Like, yeah. it really has. If you look, like, we did not have commercials for drugs. No, we did and not. And now that's all there is. <laughs> you know? We yeah. sit down there and watch a TV show at night. It's like, oh, my goodness. 
Yeah. It's you fun. know, wake up call. I have no, and I don't think many people notice this kind of stuff. I'm always watching society with a raised eyebrow, you know, but like, I would think like 70 or 80% of all the commercials on TV are either insurance companies or drug commercials. Mm -hmm. That's like our only options. Yeah. There, there yeah. are so few other things that can afford these multi-million dollar commercials, but big pharma is yeah. at the table. And so is, you know, crooked middleman insurance companies that get between you and your doctor and want, want money for nothing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those seem to be the hugely overwhelming presence of commercials on TV. Whereas, yeah, when we were kids, there was toys and food and I mean, I'm sure they still, and... yeah, cereal. Yep. And maybe they still exist. I'm sure they do, but it just seems disproportionate. I agree. And you're right. And people are like, well, why not just take a pill? They've been. And that's uh, just become what the society is. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's a, I want it. I want, they're, they're all the, girl off Willy Wonka, you know, the, the violet that eats all the blueberries right. and then right. turns into, you know, <laughs> they want it now and like, <laughs> yeah. they don't want to put in any work and like, it's a 30 second society, like no work, give it to me. And like, are we going to just be getting government funded packages coming to our door? Like, here's your pills to take this month to stay in shape. Right. And it's like, oh my goodness. And you need 14 pills because... Those 13 other ones combat that one. You know, oh. well, like Mike said, it's classic Ozempic. You know, people stop eating. They're nauseous. They lose muscle mass. Oh, well, here's an exercise mimetic. Here's your exercise yeah. pill yeah. to oh, build should... back some of that, you know. This one here will spur your appetite since that one's killing it. And, oh, yeah. God. And, yeah. and you, see that, you see that in a lot of things, too. Like, I know there's a lot of particularly young men, but – young women too, and they struggle with ADHD and stuff. So they put them on like Adderall, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. we should call that what, it, what it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's a very harsh stimulant. And then yeah. here's, here's something to help you sleep at night because mm -hmm. you're, yeah. you know, you're taking so much uh, Adderall. It's built in. It's almost built into the way that we do things. Pill for the ill, you know, yeah. from like, whether it's a, like a neurologist, psych psychiatrist or, and now it looks like a, pretty much everybody. What about your take on this, Mike? Like societally, why is, was this so unethical before and now pe people want it. So now it's okay. Uh, you know, yeah. this used to be called PEDs. This was a, like a <clears throat> topic in an exercise ethics class, mm -hmm. you know, sports sociology class. Yeah. I mean, I sound like some cranky old man, but I, I agree. I think it's a culture shift. Mm -hmm. And not all younger people, but it seems like it's gotten worse, even with older people over the last 10 to 15 years. And you'll see in fitness, like slight splintering of it going the complete opposite direction. And that's how I, that's for me, like usually my red flag of like, oh, society has gone too far one direction, right? Because Mm -hmm. Now you see like the rise of CrossFit, you see the rise of, you know, like what David Goggins has done, cold water immersion. You see all these really, really hard things and people promoting that. But that in terms of a percentage, I think is a backlash against society as a whole going the opposite direction of how do we make things e easier? Like how do I, mm -hmm. you know, just lose weight? What drug do I take? Oh, that's faster. What you know, supplement should I do? Oh, I don't want to sleep more. That's that's too hard. I want to sleep four hours a night, and I'll take this. And and uh, yeah, I mean, even for for marketing, like the the Fizz Flexor, where I'm talking about, basically, here's why you should do hard things because it's going to make you more robust, more resilient. It's going to prepare you for stressors that are coming in the future. Mm -hmm. But shocker. You have to do some hard work in an intelligent fashion in order to be prepared. Like, there's nothing yeah. else that's going to get you there. Like, yeah, some supplements, some training, some other things, some techniques can definitely help for sure. But it's going to be hard and yep. it's probably going to suck. And if there was an easy way around it, I would do a course on that. But I don't, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I right. don't know of an easy way around it. So it's just weird, even from a messaging standpoint, of okay, yeah, you can get some of these benefits, and I think they are definitely well worth it. I do think we are becoming more and more not adapted well to other environments, whether that's temperature, pH changes, you know, fuels, etc. But 
if you want to be better adapted at temperature, then you probably have to do some stuff in heat. You probably have to do some stuff in cold. Not all the time. doesn't have to be super crazy. You don't have to sit in a cold water tub at 37 degrees for 20 minutes. Like, don't start there. That's a horrible idea. But you're going to have to do some of those things. And I get worried when the general messaging is like, no, don't do any of that. Don't exercise. That's hard. You know, don't, don't sweat. Just, you know, take this pill, take this supplement, mm-hmm. do whatever. I, yeah. Like I said, if I knew a way around it where that had or even just a risk reward profile that we even understood and could have an intelligent discussion around it, then yeah, maybe, but I just think we're so far away from even having that discussion. Like, like you said, with some of these drugs, like we don't know what the profile is, mm-hmm. you know, it's like that, that to me is the most scary and that society and culture is saying, but I want it anyway. Like, yeah. you don't even know what you want. Like, you don't even know what the side effects are. <laughs> yeah. And you know, Mike, once, once they get it, I mean, I'm a big believer of anything worthwhile. You have to have a little pain to get to it. You oh, know, there yeah. has to be, yes. it has to be earned. And because let's say you give this to your clients, this is, you can get it to your door through Amazon and Mike's like, okay, I want you to take this SLU PP332, whatever. And, and, and here's your, you know, Ozempic and, and first of all, they wouldn't need you, <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. but, but most importantly, let's say they get lean and jacked and everybody gets lean and jacked. I think about that, um, kids movie, the Incredibles when everybody's super- <laughs> No one is, yes. yeah. right? And yeah. so it loses its meaning. It's like you didn't earn it. It's not satisfying, right? Because you never did anything on the front end. Well, uh, and that's the thing that they're never going to skip, and that's what people don't understand. Like yeah. much of what you earn in the gym and behind the fork has nothing to do with what's going on in your body. It's in your head. Like mm-hmm. the ability to endure, can't you can't take a pill for that. You know, and yeah. that's a big part of elite athletics. Like a big part of powerlifting oh, yeah. is just having the gumption to get under it and not be scared and just mentally be strong enough to do it. Fight. And same thing with up. yeah. The same thing with any any sport. Like a lot of what athletes are training is just showing up and like this is gonna suck. I can't wait. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like this is gonna be really freaking hard. And it's just it's going through it. I talked to my son about that. Like we'll be doing work on cutting wood or whatever. He's like, Oh man, that's a lot. I was like, Yeah, but you're gonna learn something from it. You're gonna know, like if we push through this and get it done, you're gonna look back and be like, Oh, look, we did that. You know, and you can't fast track that. You can't take a right. pill for that. Of just the mindset of like I used to run and I never believed in runner's high and things like that. And like endurance exercise is just it's literally a mindset. It's don't mm. fucking stop. And don't yeah, fucking stop. Just keep mm-hmm. and it pushing through that. And that's a lot of what elite athletics is in any field is when your body's telling you to stop, keep fucking going. And uh, yeah, when your mind says that's fucking heavy, like just push harder. You know, and you right? Can go for that. <laughs> There's you know? a switch. Like yeah, either yes. it goes off or on. I feel like yeah. imagine having a whole country of jacked and lean people and under the slightest pressure, like whether it's in a military situation or uh, a a national disaster or whatever. I mean, basically you just just backhand them and they're curled down in the fetal position, whimpering, even though they're jacked and they're, and they're lean, they have no fight in them. Yes. You know, I don't see that because all their training has been done through a pill. Like Mm -hmm. our Navy SEALs. Now they'd go through a six weeks program of taking pills and they're ready to go. It's like, no, you know, that's not yeah. doing it. Like 90% of their training is mental on just putting up with the suck. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. And like problem solving, like difficult things because of situations and experience. Because, you know, in that example, they know that their life and the life of the people next to them are going to be on the line, right? The mm-hmm. stakes are incredibly high. Yes. But if you remove all of that and you can just get to a certain skill level with no work even if you just take like knowledge work intelligence or whatever you've got this little neural link that you know attaches to ai that tells you all the information yeah okay like then what you know (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i have one more question for you guys because i want to give some fairness to the counter argument about peds you know being embraced by the gen pop because somebody might say what are you guys bitching about you know you always said it was unfair before 
And now people are much more relaxed about it. But I would honestly think a lot of people would say, yeah, but this isn't sport. So what would you say to this counter argument that sports have rules that prohibit PEDs? And in the gen pop, that's not true. So they get to use them. What do you think about that? Uh, I mean, Phil, you've been in probably – have you been in many drug-tested meats, or are they all open meats, or how does that work? I've been in both. I mean, I mm-hmm. train people Me too. For, both. Um, for shows, yeah. So, yeah, it just depends. I mean, what's going on at the time. But I will tell you this. I mean, most drug-tested meats are <laughs> bullshit, especially in powerlifting. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, there's no money in the sport. They don't have the money to actually test people. Um, yeah. They just say they are. And they're like, they ask the up, and then they throw it away. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, I remember a, there was an interview with Dave Tate years ago. He's like, most people using drugs, the most, and this was decades ago. Like, the problem is most people using drugs are just using them to kind of look better. They're just average people. And he's like, stop fucking doing that because you're using them all, and we can't get them. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're tarnishing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the people that are actually using them for something. And, uh. And like Jim Wendler talked about it. He's like, the problem is, he's like, there are side effects to this shit. And he's like, if you're going to take anabolics to, like, be on your high school football team, you're doing it for the fucking wrong reason. Mm-hmm. If you're using it to extend your thing. NFL career five more years and make an initial $80 million, uh, I can see the use. More yeah. argument there. <laughs> you <Yeah. know? laughs> So, like, yeah, I mean, but... Yeah. I mean, I would, I would, in response to a counter argument like that, like sports have rules that prohibit them. So, still shame on you, muscle heads. It's like, well, first of all, bodybuilding and powerlifting have open divisions. We just yes. mentioned that. So, yep. that's not in the rules. Now, yes. even people would rip on that. Well, but then those sports are absurd. There's drug leagues. It's like, no, it's open. It means I'm going to go in here and any tool anybody wants to use, I'm going to stand next to them and see. Yes how well I can do. So and body weight and powerlifting. Always, I, majority of the time I compete open. Because it's mm-hmm. like, man, that's where the best are. I want to measure against them. I'm not no, going to And that's what I, <laughs> I evolved in that direction too. I'm like, you know yeah. what? I just want to see, can I be a finalist yep. in, you know, and there were a few times where I remember a guy, he went on and he, I think he won the junior nationals that year. He handed all of us our asses because he was like a foot shorter than me, weighed the same amount and had like skin like pink cellophane, you know, because of the GH. And so I'm like, damn, you look great. Because, I mean, I was there to be my best. Yeah. You know, but it always did. Yeah, you do get satisfaction that, you know, you play second or third in a lineup of 20 people like that. You're like, you know what? I think I know my shit then. Yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah, the whole thing about having open leagues and, and, and that being shameful. Well, now that's coming out like the other week you'd mentioned in the drug Olympics. And it's yeah. like, maybe that's actually the more honest and transparent way uh, to do that. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. I, I don't, it seems bizarre that we used to get shit for having divisions like open divisions like mm-hmm. that. Um, because yeah, you can't use the, it's against the rules argument well, uh, in, in the, in that scenario. I think a lot of it becoming more acceptable, too, has to do with the drastic rise in male and female hormone replacement places. Oh, yeah. Like 10 years ago, you didn't hear about it. Now, holy, I, I, every day I hear commercials. For the hell, they're, they're on to hymns and hers, you know. <laughs> you know we, me and my wife make fun of the hymns and like the... The hers commercial is all about like losing weight, and and the dudes one, the hymns is like boners and hair growth. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Come to your door, and it's like it's funny that it's the same company, but it's marketed to a different group. And uh, yeah, it's HRT. Once it gets a clinical yeah. name, you know, then yep. then we're all good, I guess. It's okay. So and like so now it's not as bad, and it was seen as just cheating, and you know, so. Now it's still cheating in sport, of course, but Jim Bob can use it to look better. Uh, makes no sense, but uh, yeah, it makes even less sense that those drugs are still technically scheduled by the government. Mm-hmm. And I get it, like you, you medical use, etc. Yeah, I, I understand that, but my bias is that if you know whatever sport you're in, you can make your own rules. Everyone should follow the rules because those are public, and if you enter said sport 
you should follow the rules because you agreed. We all said these are the rules we're going to play by, whether it's tested, non-tested, you know, whatever. But for general population, at least to me, it doesn't make sense that they are scheduled the way that they are. The caveat or the counter argument is that making them unscheduled without education, and I would say this applies to almost all drugs, you know, psychedelics included, that's not going to go well either. Like you have to educate people about here's the pros, here's the cons, Mm -hmm. and maybe you have to talk to a physician or you have to talk to someone to get them. You're not just going to walk into a pharmacy and buy them when you're 17 or you have to wait till you're 21 or 22 or whatever. There should be some rules within it and then the money in my opinion should be spent on education so people know exactly what risk reward they're getting into right because we've all seen people who've taken say testosterone or other anabolics too soon Mm -hmm. yes there's endocrine issues with that but i've also seen their training historically is really bad Mm because they can get away with anything you know and then what happens later when you want to go off? You're like, you can't just, you know, put some tension on the muscle and it gets bigger. Like you probably yes. got to do things a little bit different. So, well, and we've talked about that on the show. Like yeah. that's a big problem with, with strength sports now. And I guarantee you a lot of the issue, cause we see a lot of flash in the pan lifters. Yep. Like, Oh, they're going to be amazing. And they're amazing. Two years. Because they're taking four grams of shit. Right. And, and they go up so quick. And then next thing you know, like they are like everything is injured. Yep. You know, and you don't see lifters like Ed, like, and Ed has blatantly, like he got popped four or five times. Yeah. For taking drugs. But the amount was so much lower and yeah. he still yeah. put in those decades, you know, and everybody's fast tracking that. I'm going to be the next Ed Cohn. And then three years later, you know, they get 80% of the way there. And then three years later, they're done. Like they're baked. You know? yeah. Well, let's be honest. I mean, Ed was not a what I would consider – not that I know, but I wouldn't think he was a dabbler. But compared yeah. to these fools who just want to go yeah. clubbing yes. <laughs> that are yes. taking three times what somebody like in yes. his caliber, it's like you idiots. What you know, Mike's point about education, how do you make informed consent, truly right. consent to something if you don't know? Yes. The public does need educated. By the way, before I forget. Medscape.com, if anybody wants to follow up on this, because I didn't give attribution there. Medscape.com, all this stuff about diet and exercise in, in, in a pill. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know what? I will say something. Uh, I don't know. I think Mike just said something that triggered me with this. First of all, I mean, the ultimate, I think, dishonesty when it comes to PEDs in sports is when you compete. If you were to compete in a natural league or show, and by the way, natural is a loaded word. We all know this. Um, but if you were to do that and be on, then I just think you're a coward. Like, what oh, do you yeah. do? Like, in open, open as anything goes, right? Because you are following the rules of that sport. You're not breaking any rules in that sport. But to compete in a natural show <laughs> or a natural meet and you're on grams of trend. <laughs> Like, Mm -hmm. what satisfaction are you getting out of that? Then I would say, yeah, point taken, that's no bueno. Like, congratulations, schmuck. Mm -hmm. Um, I would extend that to even some, not to name any names, but some influencers who, you know, all of us would probably look and go, he or she is on a shitload of gear. And they're like, oh, it's this new supplement I took or my amazing training plan that I got all my gains from. And I've heard people say that, well... Everybody knows that, you know, he or she is on a bunch of stuff, but I don't think new lifters know that. And to me, that's like incredibly dishonest. And I get it. Like, you can't really admit a lot of stuff because it's illegal and there's legal ramifications. I, I get it. But to me, it's just like, just, just be honest for shit's sake, you know, just (laughs) false advertising. Yeah. Yeah. It's just false advertising because people, yeah. Back to capitalism. I want people to buy my program. Right. I'm I'm suggesting it's this, my ideas, my plan. Mm-hmm. When in fact, no, it's you know well, milligrams or grams. Test a week. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and that was one of the like one of my favorite books, and it's been out of print forever. Was John Cook? He was the first guy to deadlift 800 pounds. He wrote a little 78 page book called John Cook Speaks on Powerlifting, and like in the back of that, he lays out his training cycle for 
over like 10 years and he goes into the drugs like he's 10 wow. grams of the anabol like he tells you like uh, this week i did five grams and like i think he worked up to like 15 milligrams of the mm-hmm. and it's like those levels are fucking child's play yeah. <laughs> you know, now and that's what people miss people gravitate towards that like oh he's taking this and they skip the looking at oh over a decade yeah, ten of years. hard work. <laughs> yeah. right. He's probably already lifted work. a lot before that. Yes. And it's like, oh man. Like if you're pumping two grams of test to deadlift four oh five, oh my god. <laughs> Schmuck. <laughs> you're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I've got fourteen year olds doing that. And I guarantee you they're not on anything. So <laughs> Wait, wait. Yeah, I was going to say, you got 14-year-olds deadlifting 405 or, <laughs> or pumping no, Trent? <laughs> I got 13-year-old girls deadlifting 315, man, and I don't have them on anything. Right, like, yeah. So it's like, come on. You got it. it. It's annoying that people just want to skip the work, and that's what it's all about now. Nobody wants to, to do anything. They want to lose weight without having to – they want to eat their cake and lose weight too. Yeah. They want to be strong and not have to do what we do. And I hope it, I hope it never works. I hope that the, the <laughs> company, all these drugs and the better they get, the more side effects they have. I want to see all these people grow a third head and be like, "You're stupid." That's <laughs> Phil. That's what I was getting at. I think from the very beginning of this, when it, this we started kind of formulating this topic, is I hope it doesn't work. Yes, right. I just yeah. done, <laughs> and I want it to be blatant. I want like, like literally, I want to, I want to be able to see the people that tried it it's like you tried to take the fast track now you got a head growing out of your side dummy right right <laughs> congratulations yep you just at glow. the same time population specific studies for heart failure i get it right um as i get older too you do worry about stuff like muscle loss even we all know what old lifters look like they have some muscle mass but it's a little bit saggy <laughs> i don't know like muscle loss sarcopenia and you know heart function all that kind of stuff is is real it'd be nice if these meds were tailored in those clinical trials to only help those situate like it only works if you're over 60 you know to help preserve muscle tissue i guess then there's old athletes that would have used it there, maybe there's always a way around it but yeah to me it's a justice issue right you you get rewards commensurate with what you deserve yes. with what you earn and it seems like an injustice if people are taking all these injections and um, exercising a pill and all that kind of stuff. So. All right. Well, I guess yeah. that's, yeah, that's that. <laughs> Exercise mimetics. Yep. Uh, Lighten a fire and, you know, gen pop hypocrisy, I think, here. But, yeah. All right. Preaching to the choir. I feel like it's another preaching to the choir episode. Oh, we. I'm sure we are. You know, <laughs> most of the yeah. people when we were around there all saying, "Yeah," because they work hard too, and they, you know, generally watch what they eat. Right. So, they earn. It. Uh, yep. Keep earning it, people. All right. We'll we'll talk to everybody next week. I guess. Yep. Yeah. Iron Radio is accepting donations. If you like what we do, the professors, the scientists, the bodybuilding show promoters, the athletes themselves in powerlifting and bodybuilding, um, please consider making a donation or maybe buying something from the ironradio.org store. Uh, We also are accepting supporting members. So for $4 a month, which is frankly less than the bank sneaks out of your account in fees, you can step up and support a form of sort of public radio for the bodybuilding and powerlifting and strength community. The Iron Radio Podcast and all of the audio on ironradio.org is for informational purposes only. If you're interested in starting a diet or exercise program, it's important to check with your physician. Also seek the help of registered dietitians, athletic trainers, and qualified exercise physiologists in order to make the progress that you need.